It is often said that you can never really tell where a person's heart is. But Jesus seems to disagree with that. In Matthew 6.21, Jesus said, where your treasure is, is where your heart is. In today's message, Bishop Wiley is going to talk about hidden figures. Does your treasure accurately tell the story of where your heart is? Let's take a listen. My subject today is uncomfortable for a pastor and for his congregation. If it were not in the scriptures, I would not talk about it. I would not ever talk about it. If it were not in the scriptures, I would never mention it at all. It is the subject of money. Let me tell you something about me you may or may not know. I have always prayed to be independently wealthy so that I would never have to take my income from the church. I have never been completely comfortable drawing an income from the church, even to this day. I know a preacher, of a preacher, who wrote a book. The book was so popular, sold so well, and made so much money he called his finance department and said to them, don't ever pay me again at this church. And then he said something else. He said, as a matter of fact, add up everything you've given me since I've been here. And he's the founder. And he wrote a check to them for everything they had ever paid him. And then he said, my wife and I are going to reverse tithe. They live on 10% and give 90% to the church. I've never been comfortable, still now, drawing a salary from the church. When I was younger, I don't hear it so much anymore. Whenever the preacher addressed the subject of money, they used to say, you're killing the spirit. It's a sensitive subject. Someone has said that the average person would rather give you the intimate details of their sex life than to let you see the ledger of their checkbook. It's a sensitive subject. And it is particularly sensitive in church. Somehow, we feel like that subject just doesn't belong in the house of the Lord. And one of the greatest arguments in the church is about giving. Now, Jesus said more about money than he did heaven and hell. But today, I want to deal with what I call the three Goldilocks and the three bears theological conundrum. By that I mean a message on money in the church should not be too hard or too soft too hot or too cold. I want it to be just right. But I, what I want to do though is I want to relieve the tension. I can already feel you a little uncomfortable. But it's in the book. So I got to teach it. 
And just because I feel uncomfortable receiving my salary doesn't mean you don't owe it to me. Now, some folk like the idea of me not taking one. That's wonderful, Bishop. So I shouldn't give you anything. The Bible said the servant is worthy of his hire. Don't muzzle the ox. Treads out the corn. It's a subject that has to be dealt with. So let's talk, let's go straight to Jesus. Let's not deal with anybody else. Let's go straight to the master himself. Now Jesus said many things that were difficult, hard to understand, mysterious, esoteric, somewhat, you know, cloudy, nebulous is the word I'm looking for. But then Jesus could also drive straight to the heart of the matter. He said, either you're for me or against me. There's a broad way and there's a narrow way. There's good fruit, there's evil fruit. So many times, it's what he said we fully understood. And in this text, I'm almost finished. We understood exactly what he said. But don't miss the first part. He said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth. Because on earth, things happen. Moth eats up, rust decays, thieves steal. Well, it's more than that. All of our stuff gets old. Buy a car, it will wear out. Buy a house, you fix it. Buy clothes, they either get old, go out of style, moth eaten. But think about it. If Jesus were here, he'd talk about the stock market. If it goes up, you do well. But if it crashes, you had people in the, in the, the uh, depression jumping out of buildings because millionaires. And many times when you say that these people have billions of dollars, that's on paper. But, 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 but everything you and I have can be lost so quickly. Uh, if the waters rise up in a great flood, your car will not get you home if that car floods. If a hurricane or maybe a, a tornado sweeps through, your home does not have to be there when you get back. And don't tell me the insurance company has got to pay you. Why do you think they had so much trouble getting this health care bill passed? Nothing you have in this world is secure. So even if I'm preaching to a million at a day, don't get comfortable. Before noon, you could be a pauper. In this world, things, are, and then they have something else new now. You know, they even now have this thing with your body. It's so funny. As if we didn't have enough trouble. Now they're telling us, if you once had chicken pox, now you might get shingles. Well, good Lord, as if we needed something else how quickly and easily the stuff of this world is gone passes away and then if you die none of it is yours naked you came in and naked you going out no, no bank vaults in the, in the casket. No, no checkbooks. No, in the casket. I, I, I was at a funeral yesterday and I looked in that box as I have many times and I said, Lord, look what happens to us when it's all over. Jesus said, now let me tell you what he was not saying. He was not saying don't save. He didn't say that. Read the book of Proverbs. It talks about being frugal and understanding the handling of money. He didn't say that. He didn't say, he did not say, don't have anything. The Bible says the righteous leave an inheritance of their children's children. Those are your grandchildren. You have to be wise to leave money to your grandchildren. He was talking about something else. He was talking about priorities. But, but here, the, the troubling thing about this text 
And I wish he hadn't said it. He said, the problem is not with money. He wasn't talking about money. He's talking about your heart. That's where we make our mistake. It ain't about tithing. It ain't about giving. Jesus said, where your treasure is. Let me break it down to you. If your treasure's not there, your heart is not there. I can preach in this pulpit. If I don't put any money in this church, I don't love it. I'm going to just make it plain to you. I pastor here. I'm the founding senior pastor. I'm the bishop. But if, you, if my money's not here, I don't love this church. I'm almost finished. I'm almost done. I'm not going to beat you up with your table. If my money ain't with Elder Wiley, I don't love her. I can, almost said the wrong thing. I can, let me say this delicately. I can hold her hand. I can perform certain acts of husbandry. I'm trying to be nice. I can, I can uh, perform certain acts of affection. But if I don't give her what it takes to live, I don't love her. And let me tell you something. You can force, listen to me, church. You can force people to give, but you can't force them to love. You can, you can beat up people and fuss at them and holler at them and tell them they're going to hell and they ain't right. Stop it. You, ain't got, you can't make anybody love you. Either you love a person or you don't. And love gives automatically. Love is not twisted. You got to love me or you're going to hell. No, you don't have to love me. And you don't have to love this church. Just don't pretend that you do. It's in the heart. Jesus said, you put your treasure where your heart is. And what he was saying was... Don't put your treasure in earthly things because they are meaningless. Oh my God, I feel so sorry for you and I. There's a certain designer I like. If you look at me carefully, you can see I like that designer. I do, I really do. No, 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 no. But then I found out, I thought for sure that stuff that designer made was leather. It's vinyl. Vinyl. I walk it around. Yeah, I got, you know, the, the designer, the French designer. I got the briefcase. I got the card holder. And they make vinyl to make me think I'm better than somebody else who got something from Walmart. Vinyl is vinyl. I'm, vinyl is vinyl, y'all. And just because you put your name on it doesn't make me better than you. The car you drove... I don't care what kind of car you drove. It can only get you up the street. All clothes can do is cover your body, whether it's a rope, a, 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 a mink, or a German Shepherd. Shoes are leather. Leather comes off of a cow. I was talking to a man one day about this $150 billion dollar uh, 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 something watch I think it was and he said I said what makes this watch so expensive he said to me he said um, it's stainless steel I said so are forks <laughs> stuff doesn't make you who you are you're who you are because God made you you don't make you your clothes don't make you you make your clothes you, you are what God made you. You are the valuable thing, not your stuff. Stuff passes away. Stuff gets old. I want my treasure where it really matters. I want my treasure in eternal things. I want my treasure to feed the hungry. I want my treasure to clothe the naked. I want my treasure to get somebody saved. I want my treasure to rebuild the cathedral. I want my treasure to put some child through school. I want my treasure to help some mother who needs help. I want my treasure to help somebody. Build your hopes. Folks, 
listen, I'm done. I'm finished with the sermon. Listen, people, I like nice things. I want nice things, and I want you to have them. Honestly, I do. I want this to be the most blessed church in the world, but I'm begging you, don't put your confidence in stuff, in things. It perishes. It's of no value. Put your money, put your heart in that which will reward you because when you die, and stand before the Lord. He's not going to ask me about my vinyl. Or my watch. Or my house. He's going to ask me. Did you help somebody? Life center. I want to rebuild the cathedral up there. But I want to rebuild it so it can serve that neighborhood. Let's just say we. Um rebuild the cathedral and keep, keep this building. Why? Why? You have to pay the light bill. But folks, what about, Gene, what about what about a daily feeding program? I appreciate what they give in the scholarship. What, what if we gave a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in scholarships? What if we're known for a church that, that, that what Elder Wiley wants to open a, a miracle house where homeless mothers can come with their, with their children? What about that house I want to open, a halfway house when our young men get out of prison, they have a place to go, get drug treatment, get their GED, get some skills. Folks, folks it, it ain't about paying the light bill. It's not about that. It's about building things that matter it's about investing in something that will meet you in the judgment and the lord will say you stored up treasure for that which matters put your value on eternal things because those are the only things that matter i refuse to be in anything or in any relationship that I don't put my money in. Why? Because where my treasure is, that's where my heart is, my affections. So don't let anybody make you feel guilty about giving. Just say, no, I don't give because I don't love it. It's time to get honest. Don't get an attitude because I don't have one. But I want you to be honest. Just say, no, I don't give because quite frankly, that's just not where my heart is. It's where my body is. It's where I preach and teach and sing and shout, but, I, but, but no, but, but my heart is not there. I had to learn how to pastor that. Sorry it took me 40 years. And I made the same mistake in Mount Clemens I made here, and I, I, I'm just a slow learner. I just, I'm just kind of, I, I think one of the reasons I don't like the word stupid is because I think it best describes me. Because I've tried all my life to force people to do something that they obviously didn't want to do. And leadership is leading people where they want to go, not where they don't want to go. You got to come to Bible study. No, you don't if you don't want to. You need to be here to take the Lord's Supper. You don't take the Lord's Supper, you ain't saved. Whether you save or not really ain't my business because I don't save people. I am not a savior. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? See, folks, it took me 37 years of pastoring to learn the principle. Jesus said, my sheep. So let me tell you, let me tell you what leadership is like if I can just illustrate this with my last three minutes. Let me illustrate it. Clyde, Alicia, come here why did they come they heard my voice and they recognized my voice follow me it's as simple as that my sheep hear my voice call them deacons call them just that call them why did not come in he's not their shepherd He's not their shepherd. They follow the shepherd's voice. Now watch this. Uh, 
you and you. Come here. As well as I know your name. Why did they follow me? Because they heard my voice. Stand right there. Right side by side. Face me. Chuck and Deacon. Stay right there. Come on. Come on. What's wrong with you? The word says you ought to obey me. The word says you ought to do what I tell you. Come on. The word said. The word said. That we passed through. The word said. Now come on. I beat them up with the word. They still didn't move. Now watch this. They, they don't really want to come. Come on, y'all. They didn't come. Be, that time, they didn't come because they heard my voice. They came because I forced them. And anybody who does anything because you force, eventually going back to their old stuff. Anybody that you beat them down, you got to do what I say, Clint. You got to do what I say. I'm so sick of his voice. All right, all right, I'll do it. But soon, he's going to get tired. Let me give you another illustration. Sit down. Come here. Come here. Sit down. Hear my voice. Watch this. He's going that way. I'm going this way. And this is a good marriage lesson, too. Watch this. Okay? See, watch this. Start walking. Stop. Now, you headed this way. I'm headed this way. Watch this. Look, man. Uh, see? See, here, dude. Let me wrap at you for a minute. See, what I really want you to do is I want you to go with me. Go that way. See? We need to go that way. You were going that way? Go that way. You, you want to go with me? Okay, cool. After a while, he going to say, wait a minute. I had decided. I just went that way because you asked me. And sooner or later, you know why folks leave you? Because they said, I really wasn't going that way. I just went that way because you asked me. I really going to go back. Listen, people return back to what they really want to do. I'm teaching my head off today. I ain't hooping, but I'm teaching. And so I get married with him. I don't understand. He was walking with me. I don't understand. He was standing by my side. He'd been with me for 15 years. And all of a sudden, he turned and went. He was really, his heart was that way in the first place. Let people go the way they want to go. Now, what you want to do is find somebody already going your way. Find somebody who want what you want and see what you see and like what you like. And if you don't have that, you're going to have a mess on your hands. You can't change people's minds. Their minds are made up. And if you're over 20, your mind is made up. Probably younger than that. You've got to find people. I wish I could teach this. It's like getting married, making somebody like the outdoors that don't like the outdoors. Okay, okay, Sister Jess said, you so pretty. My God, you so pretty. You such a lovely lady. You too, baby. Y'all so lovely. But I'm going to pick her. I'm going to marry her because she's pretty. Look at that hat. Look at that. And by the way, I like black and white. You just look so pretty. And see, because you look pretty to me, touch my hand. Or you make me feel good. I'm acting like compatibility don't matter. See, see, I felt something when she touched my hand, but we ain't compatible because I like the outdoors and she like the indoors. So we're gonna go on feelings and emotion and excitement, and then but see, after a while, let's go camping. I don't do camping. I said let's go camping. I told you, I you know black ladies. I don't do camping. Now there's a division between us. Now watch this. Now all of a sudden that touch don't feel the same. Because touching can't last but so long if y'all ain't compatible. 
good sex can't make up for incompatibility. Teach Taylor. And I'm like Bishop Jakes now. Quit talking about things don't change my life. Any relationship changes your life. I heard Bishop Jake say, how in the world are you going to be in a relationship and it doesn't change you? You don't have to get a dog to change. If you get a goldfish, it's going to change your life. A goldfish in your house is going to change your life. If you get in a relationship with somebody, it's going to change your life. And you've got to make some decisions. Oh, stay out of the relationship. Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, take up your cross. The church is based on feelings. I like that church. Don't go to a church because you like it. Go to a church because the Lord has planted you there and what they're doing is what you want because God has a preacher for every creature. Some people wouldn't follow me around the corner. I ain't that kind of preacher. I don't, I, that's understandable. I wasn't made for everybody like I'm not made for every woman. I can't get mad because some, some woman don't like me. I wasn't made for every woman. I ain't tall enough. I ain't strong enough. I ain't big enough. I ain't handsome enough for some women. Cool. I, I'm all right. And don't get mad because somebody don't fit you. Find what fits you. What a powerful word we just heard about our treasure and our hearts. But does your heart belong to Jesus Christ? If not, repeat these life-changing words after me. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart, he arose from the dead. Now, by faith and according to your word, I receive the gift of salvation, forgiveness of sins, and everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations and welcome to life. And until next time, we want you, yes you, to enjoy life.